If you're sick of trying to search for the best point and shoot film camera for yourself, then look no further. I've got five of the best point and shoot cameras for different types of film photography. And I've actually used all of these cameras, so I can tell you firsthand whether these are any good or not. So this is not necessarily a list of the best ever point and shoot film cameras. These are the best point and shoot film cameras for all different types of film photography. I'm not gonna waste any more of your time than I need to. So here's number one. This is the Olympus AF-10. Now the reason why I like this camera so much and why I would suggest it to a lot of beginner film photographers is because it's got a great lens, it's really easy to use and really reliable. It's got this brilliant slide-in door that helps keep it safe from the elements. This is the type of film camera that's great for sort of nights out or travel photography, things like that where you want to get fun, interesting photographs of day-to-day -day life or just document your life. Obviously also it's Olympus, so generally they were some of the best point and shoots way back in the 80s and 90s. So it's just a really reliable thing and a great go-to point and shoot film camera. This next one's pretty interesting because it was only just released and I've just made a video on this camera as well because it's a really crazy and interesting camera. This, the Lomography Apparat, or however you say it, is one of the most interesting little point and shoot cameras that's actually been made recently. Usually a new film camera is the bare basics. With the Lomography Apparat, I'm actually quite interested in how they came up with this camera. I know that it was partially inspired by a camera that I've reviewed before, which is called the Split Cam Image Fusion. Basically, you can double expose on this camera. You can do split images where you've got like the same person in different sides of the frame. You can use different gels for your flash that you can stick in here. And then your flash is like orange or red or green or whatever. You can put uh, lens filters over the camera so it creates like weird patterns and stuff like that. Now, yes, yeah, some of these things are a bit gimmicky and I'm not saying it's great for everyone, but this is a really good playful camera. Once again, amazing for trips away, amazing for nights out, amazing for a gift really for certain people that might really enjoy film photography. And I think it's just a really fun little camera to have for all kinds of different things. And I think it's interesting to include a film camera that's not been made 20, 30, 40 years ago and include one that was actually made this year. I'm now gonna suggest a film camera that is way better than any of these film cameras, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best film camera for you. If you wanna shoot things like street photography, portrait photography, or anything that's a little bit more professional, then I'd suggest the Yashica T4. Now I don't actually have one of these with me right now, but I've used them in the past and I think they're incredible. Obviously people shout about the Contax T2 and other film cameras that are even more expensive, but when you can get the Yashica T4 for about 400 pounds these days, for the more professional side of point and shoot film photography, I think this is one of the top dogs. The Yashica T4 was a favorite of a lot of photographers back in the day, most specifically Terry Richardson, but I don't want to talk about him because he's a weirdo. But when it comes to point and shoot film photography, this is a great camera. It's got a 3.5 Carl Zeiss lens, which is absolutely unbelievable. It's small, it's slimline, it's generally quite reliable even nowadays, and it is widely known as one of the best point and shoot film cameras going. So if you wanna take some of those more professional type pictures, then you really wanna go for something along those lines. This next one is quite cheap and cheerful, but just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's a bad camera. The Pentax SP0738 is an overlooked camera, which is still really good. There are quite a few other Pentax SBO cameras, which are all great cameras. I don't know why they were overlooked as much as they have been, but generally even a bad Olympus is more popular than a good Pentax point and shoot. I'm not really sure why. 
you could probably pick up a Pentax Espio for 30 to 40 quid if you were looking hard enough. It's really affordable, it's reliable, it's great for things like travel, nights out and things like that, documenting your life, all those kinds of quite casual film photography. One of the only downsides to the SBO is that it's a little bit bulky and it looks kind of shit. But the upside is you don't necessarily have to get an Olympus and you can get pretty good shots for less money. Next up is the Olympus Mu 1. The reason why I picked the Olympus Mu 1 and not the Olympus Mu 2 is because the price of the Mu 2 has skyrocketed and the Mu 1 is still a brilliant camera. The only real difference between the two is that the Mu 1 has a 3.5 lens and the Mu 2 has a 2.8 lens. Otherwise, maybe the AF is not quite as good in my opinion, the Mu1 is still a brilliant camera. The Mu1 is sort of the in-between between the casual and the kind of more professional looking photos. Obviously, yes, it's point and shoot. They're never gonna be crystal clear and properly sharp, but the Olympus Mu1 can still produce some really great quality shots. Some of the aspects that I love about the Mu1 is how compact it is how reliable it is and how good it is in different kinds of weather. Because of the way that the Olympus Mu1 was designed, you can generally keep bad weather out of this camera and it makes it less likely to be broken or damaged. The Mu1 would be great for travel, nights out, etc. but you could also do bits of street photography on this and, and even portrait photography, things like that. Obviously, it's never going to be quite the same as an SLR, but if you want to try things out on a point and shoot, then this is your camera. If you're not too sure whether any of these point and shoot cameras is quite for you, then you might want an SLR camera or a rangefinder. If you want sharper, more professional pictures, then you probably want an SLR or rangefinder. If you want something that's more casual, or you want to be able to take really quick candid shots, then maybe you want a really high quality point and shoot camera. It's a hard decision to make, but I hope that I've made things easier for you today. Now, if you've already watched a few of my videos before, then you'll know that at the end of my video, I make a recommendation for a song. I've started wanting to do this because I really love recommending music and I think it's a really nice way to connect with you. So, Recently, I've been putting a bit more effort to find new music because I think it's a really exciting and fun thing. And I found a song called Selfish Soul by Sudan Archives. I'll leave the name down in the description if you didn't really catch that. But it's a really nice, fast song that is just good energy and great vibes. And I think you'll love it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it really valuable. If you did, then drop me a subscribe because it's really handy for me and it'll be really handy for you because you'll get really great videos from me. I hope you have the best week and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care and watch more of my videos.